Hey guys and welcome to my new movie review. First of all, I just wanted to say welcome so much to my YouTube channel. It's so, so good to have you here. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for clicking this link. So this is an incredibly special, incredibly special request to Devbo Slice, who is one of my subscribers and viewers of my content. I just wanna take this opportunity to say that thank you so, so much for this request. I cannot tell you enough how much I appreciate so much this request because I completely forgot that this movie even existed at all. And Devbo Slice brought it to my attention last night as this person reviewed my one of my content on something else that I, uh, another movie review that I did, which is actually Radio Flyer, which if you wanna go check that out, go to my YouTube channel and check that out, and I'll actually leave it, the link of that review at the end of this. So as you guys saw, this movie review is about the movie called The Boy Who Could Fly. It came out in 1986, it's rated G, and the duration, guys, is one hour and 54 minutes long. It's a drama, romantic, and fantasy movie, which I also would top in there at actually a bit of comedy due to Fred Savage's character by the name of Lewis. And I'll give you my thoughts on this movie review right after the synopsis. An artistic boy who dreams of flying touches everyone he meets including a new family who is moved in after their father dies. The starring cast of this movie, guys, is Lucy Durkins, who plays Millie, Jay Underwood, who plays the flying boy, Eric, Bonnie Bedella, who plays Charlene, Fred Savage himself, who plays Lewis, who is absolutely hilarious. And I'm gonna mention this one here. I'm actually gonna mention a very annoying character in my personal opinion in this movie, who plays Mindy Cullen, who plays Geneva. And she's a very, very, she was a very annoying character in my personal opinion. So guys, straight off the bat, I just wanna to say to you, when I was a young man, this movie really, really blew my mind. This movie just took my mentality of a young boy ready to dream to a whole new level. Looking back on this movie, knowing of its existence and just remembering that this movie was even a thing, I just sat down and just Rewatched it today before I did this review so it's fresh in my mind and I really thought to myself after watching it I find it incredible at how the practicality of movies back made in the 1980s stands the test of time today I mean really the storylines were so incredibly powerful. The character chemistry, and, and those of you who, who have been following my YouTube channel for any period of time, you guys know character chemistry, in my opinion, is one of the most vital, vital, vital things in a movie. I mean, it really, really is. If you think about a movie and its character chemistry and the storyline behind it, you'll actually notice that the character chemistry drives the storyline and it's so imperative because if you're not convinced of the characters in front of you then you're not going to be convinced by the by what what the actors are are trying to give you in the story and it really weakens the plot point and the narrative of where the story is actually going so when i when I was watching this film, guys, I just want to say a nitpick. I just want to say something that made me go, Ugh, and then I'll get into the, my passion of this movie. The lady, the character in this movie called Geneva, the way that she, luckily for me, luckily she's barely in the film. She's barely in the film. But when she is in the film at the start of the movie, I hated her character so much. She was just rude. Like, who does that? And when you see the movie, those of you who have seen the movie, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And those of you, when you're gonna go see the movie after I've hyped up this movie for you with this review, when you see it, you'll know exactly what I'm saying. You will know exactly what I'm saying. Her character is an idiot. Like I did, I just didn't, her, I didn't like it at all in any way, shape or form. I was not, I was just not a fan of her at all. I was like, what? 
really but really like it yeah she just rubbed me the wrong way like fully through and through she rubbed me the wrong way i was not a fan of her in any any way shape or form but one character on the good note one character that i guys i can't even i can't even begin to express how much i love his character in this movie and it was brilliant it was so funny it was so kind it was so sweet he nailed this movie and and funnily enough this is actually his his movie debut his this is his first movie out of the gate and i tell you now what an absolute charmer and that is my friends fred savage fred savage seriously wow what an amazing little character and guys just before i keep going on with this movie review if you'd be so kind if you haven't already and you are new to my channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button and while you're subscribing don't forget to click that bell for notifications and if you'd be so kind while you're clicking that bell for notifications don't forget to leave a thumbs up on this movie review i really appreciate that now back to my thoughts so fred savage as i said plays a character called lewis in this movie i kid you not in any way shape or form man he is so cute funny and adorable his lines are brilliant his character is just so lovable in this movie and i know this movie isn't about him but he plays such a such a powerful and 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 a, a, just a driven movie presence like he really locks you in and just want makes you laugh smile and just feel good about this movie i can totally understand why people were like the boy who could fly that would like knowing the title of this movie that would kind of make you feel like there's going to be a lot and i realize why now that there wasn't as much special effects as you'll see at the end of the movie as you would think there would be specifically because of the fact that when I was watching this film for the first time and I, I honestly think this is the first time I've seen this since I was a little boy is is purely because of special effects is purely because of that and re-watching it I, I really I get it I mean I really really understand why they couldn't have done it so much more in fact in fact a lot of the movie specifically because of the cgi that that is is done back then specifically because of that if you know if you really understood what it was that they had to do in order to make these things so believable to the audience it, it wasn't as, as it, they didn't have the technology that they do today they really really didn't in fact i honestly believe genuinely guys i don't believe that they could make a movie like this i really really don't today not to this level of gravity i really don't because the gravity of the of this movie really came from the actors and the color palette and the era of where this or when this film was when it was filmed because that was really the heaviness of this movie now i want to talk to you about someone who i had the biggest crush on ever back in the day and that's millie played by the character lucy durkins wow i remember being a young man thinking to myself how is it possible that a woman can be that beautiful that pretty that elegant that stunning oh my gosh you guys i had the biggest crush on her ever seriously oh my gosh and it's kind of funny because re-watching this film i actually was thinking about my wife and i was thinking man my wife actually re reminds me of, of millie it's like seriously of Luke, lucy durkins like i'm not even kidding you i was like wow wow that's wow that's crazy that's that really is my type of lady there you go but my wife's way prettier anyway <laughs> This movie is incredible, guys. It really, really is. Now, one of the things I have to say, Jay Underwood, who plays the character Eric, who is the boy who can fly, one of the things that I was really surprised about and re-watching it, I only realize now about uh, this about his character is simply the, and this is so, so simple, and I actually don't think he would have got paid a lot of money for this movie because of the fact of this, his lines of dialogue in this movie. I kid you not, guys, it's amazing at 
he literally, okay, and this is no spoiler. For anyone who's been following me for any period of time, I don't do spoilers in my movie reviews because I don't think spoilers are fair. But I'm gonna say this, it's not a spoiler. He has technically, I would say, two lines of dialogue. And, it, and, the, and the second line isn't a line. The first line of dialogue is he says her name, Millie. And the second line of dialogue, he says something really, really powerful to Millie. But, the, but he says her name in the second line of dialogue. So technically it's two, but that's it. That's all Eric's character in this movie says in this entire movie, and which is really, really powerful because as they say, he is, he is in this movie autistic. Now, the thing that I find incredible about this movie, there's a sequence in this movie that really, really, really punched really hard. And a bit of background about me really quickly, guys, is I am a, I am a support worker for people who have disabilities. So when I saw this sequence in this movie of him being in a nut house, I'm so glad that we don't view people like that today. Really, I, although I know, I know, and I don't know anything about where these are, but I, I know and I understand that they still do exist because there are people that are just not fit for society. They just have really, really bad issue problems going on in their mind, and I get that, but I don't, I don't want to talk about that. But where they where they situate him in a, in, in a point of this movie, and. I can understand when you see this movie, you'll be like, wait, what? How did he get out of that? But I know I understand why they didn't really focus really him on that element of this movie. I, I get that because of the fact that when you, when you watch it, you'll understand that that plot point sort of, it's, it's kind of a twist, but it's not really. But that plot point element of this movie isn't really what the movie's about like like it doesn't really drain your focus away from the rest of the movie now speaking of draining away rest of, uh, away from the rest of the movie guys i just want to say this about this movie when he when that situation in this movie happens to him when it happens to him they focus the movie back towards millie and F fred savage's character back to millie and lewis's character back at home now they kind of, the, the gear kind of, the gear of the movie, the pacing of the movie, it doesn't technically slow down, but the narrative point of the movie kind of backs off a little bit away from the fact of the storyline of them, of Millie's journey in understanding that this guy can fly, that Eric can fly, but it focuses more on another direction of the film momentarily now in my personal opinion i don't believe that that takes away the focus of the film however i didn't really understand what the point of that part of the movie was not negatively not negatively don't get me wrong i just didn't really understand why they why they shifted the direction of the film because if you really think about it and you really watch it, as I said, this movie goes for maybe 10, 10 minutes shy of like seven minutes shy of two hours. That element of the movie, the, the, the narrative shift, in an essence, kind of doesn't really make sense. Not that it's a bad thing, because it really draws the family dynamic together tighter. And that's where, that's the one of the reasons, the parts of this movie that made me go, why did they do that? Like, what was that about? Because it, 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 it realistically, it kind of did. It took the focus off Eric. Like, like it really did. It took the focus off Eric completely. But then, the movie reshifts its focus, and Millie discovers something, and the, the and then that's when the the passionate criteria element of this movie really really sinks in to Eric and Millie's connection to what happens next and that's this what I'm talking about guys is, is really is towards the end of the film like it really is but that character connection between those two characters 
really drives the rest of the film. And I tell you what, guys, after that, when Eric and Millie really connect, and then, you know, then that's where the, the dr dramatic tension and the adventure elements of this movie, if you call that, really ramp up, is really powerful. And it really, really captures the young audience's dreamlike state to a new level. Like it really does that fantasy element of this movie. It really ramps up and I really, really appreciated that. Because if you look back on this movie, I can understand, I really can genuinely understand and why someone would say that this movie is boring. I, I, I get it, I, I really do, I, I really do get it. Now, I'm gonna stop here, I'm gonna pause here for a second guys and ask the question to my audience that I like to ask in my movie reviews because I can and it's my thoughts, it really is. The question that I ask you guys, you amazing subscribers and viewers of this content, I appreciate it so much, you have no idea. Does The Boy Who Could Fly, does this movie have the core elemental essential thing in its DNA to make film film, really? Does The Boy Who Could Fly have rewatchability, guys? Does it have rewatchability? Because it really is the ultimate question to a movie like this. Specifically a movie that was that came out so long ago, 1986. Guys, does The Boy Who Can Fly have rewatchability? Really? Yes! In absolute spades. And I really mean that. In absolute spades. This movie has so much rewatchability to it. It really does. In fact, the way I watched it today, I actually watched it on YouTube because it's actually available on YouTube. And yes, 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 you're welcome. You guys are amazing. So you can buy it or rent it on YouTube. But I'm going to leave the link to watch this movie in the description of this YouTube video. You're so welcome. That's how much I appreciate you guys. You guys are amazing. I'm gonna leave it in there. Go and watch it, go and rent it. It's like five bucks, it's four dollars something, I think, to rent it, or you can own it and buy it on YouTube. Totally up to you, up to your discretion. I rented it, but I bought it on DVD because it's not, unfortunately not available on Blu ray. But I rented it, I'm so glad I did. I really genuinely am. I'm so glad that I watched this. I'm so glad that I rented it. This movie is so heart, heartfelt, warming in every element of its core DNA. It's beautiful, it's impacting. The storyline just drives along so beautifully. It really, really does, guys. The main character, and I know technically the main character is Eric. I know that, I, can't, I get that, I know it's Eric, but re-watching it and just seeing where this movie drives to, Millie really is the essential character of this movie. She really, really is. And for a, such a beautiful, foundational, fundamental reason, guys, because she's so stunningly beautiful and amazing character. Wow. Seriously, wow. Guys, I'm going to wrap this up, but... You guys know what time it is. For all my viewers and subscribers of my YouTube channel and anyone who's viewed my content before and who's viewing this right now, you guys know that I love giving you guys trivia. And there's a little bit of trivia and I'm gonna read all the trivia for this review because it's awesome and I really am so passionately blown away by this movie. It is such a, just a brilliant movie. So guess what time it is, guys? It's trivia time. In one scene of the film, guys, Fred Savage is actually playing a video game called Starfighter from the film back in 1984, also directed by Nick Castle, who is the director of this film. Next piece of trivia is, guys, this film is the is Fred Savage's direct debut. There you go. Next piece of trivia is, guys, the band Thrice released a song based on the film titled A Song for Millie Michelson on their 2007 LP, The Alchemy Index, Volume 3 and 5. Next piece of trivia is, guys, Nick Castle has cited the film Dumbo, 1941, 
as his primary inspiration for this film. Next piece of trivia is guys, this is the theatrical film debut of Jason Priestley. Next piece of trivia is guys, director cameos. Nick Castle along with fellow directors John Carpenter and Tommy Lee Wallace credited as the crew Patyville's as the band in the video Millie and Geneva watch while drinking strawberry daiquiris. Next piece of trivia is guys, on the UK CBS Fox videotape of the film there was a voiceover warning just before the start of the film, the boy who could fly. The scenes that include flying in this film are performed by professional stunt artists who have performed under strict supervision, do not in any way attempt to imitate or perform the, in this movie. How crazy is that? Next piece of trivia is guys. And this, this is the last piece of trivia guys, the final piece of trivia and I will leave you with this one guys, so enjoy. When Geneva and Sunny leave after meeting Lily and Lewis, Millie and Lewis for the first time, their mother says to them, and you guys thought that you wouldn't make any new friends? Millie and Lewis then look at each other at the exact same time. In order to get the timing right, Lucy Deakins told Fred Savage she would tap him on the back as their signal to do it. It did not occur to her that she was, he was wearing a microphone and it picked up the sound of the tapping in the movie. If you listen closely, you can actually hear the thudding sound right before they look at each other. Go back guys, as I said, this I've left the link to this movie in the, in the description of this video. Go watch the movie and go and listen to that part really closely and you'll see that piece of trivia right now. I appreciate you guys being here. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you also to my subscribers and my viewers, everyone. You guys are amazing. I really appreciate you being here. Don't forget guys, who's bringing this movie review for the boy who could fly. This is Superman Steve, guys, flying out!